Hi, I'm Brian Costley. Today we'll be installing a lot on this GSA Class 5 security container. We're required to use a lock that meets federal specification FFL 2740, so we'll be using Sargent and Greenleaf's new Model 2740 lock. To begin, we'll take a look at the lock mounting surface. Note that on this mounting plate, the mounting screw locations are actually raised studs. We're going to measure the door thickness and to give us a, a good location for our measuring tool, which will be a pair of dial calipers, we'll take the 2740 lock body and place the cover side down against the mounting studs and from the other side we'll insert the depth gauge portion of our dial calipers. With the cover side of the lock body acting as a stop, I insert the depth probe through the spindle hole, bring the caliper base up against the dial ring mounting surface, and I get a measurement of 1.080 inches. This particular container manufacturer uses a bolt extension attached to the combination lock bolt. We can see that the end of the lock bolt is drilled and tapped for this attachment. These are 1032 screws that matches the thread dimensions used in older containers by Mosler to accommodate retrofits and those dimensions are also used uh, by some of the current manufacturers when they require a bolt extension. So we'll just tighten these two screws down and then our extension will be firmly attached to the lock bolt and now we're ready to install the lock body. We're required when we use the lock mounting screws to use a bit of Loctite thread locker 242 on the tip of each one of the screws. Alternatively, I like to take the thread locker, place a drop on the end of a small flat blade screwdriver or probe, and then place the drop inside the mounting stud. This makes it very difficult to get thread locker inside the lock case, which is absolutely something that we do not want to do. Once I have thread locker in all of the mounting stud locations, I'll waste no time installing the lock body and its mounting screws. Now that the thread locker is in the mounting studs, we'll use a magnetic screwdriver to make our job a little bit easier. Place the lock in the lock box and locate one of the mounting screw studs. We won't tighten it down securely, but we'll put all four screws in loosely at first. Once we have all four screws installed loosely, we'll go back, we'll tighten using the diagonal tightening method to make sure we get even pressure on the lock body. Our next step is to mount the dial ring on the front of the container. I'm going to show you two ways to do this, and I'm also going to show you two variations uh, processes to get the spindle to the correct length on the dial. And the two processes overlap. So you'll have to pay close attention to what we're doing here. First I install the dial ring mounting screws but loosely. There's still movement that's possible in this dial ring and that's the way I want it right now. Next step is to thread the dial spindle into the drive cam. I put this uh, large spring over the spindle, then the metal washer, and then the plastic washer. Now, lightly holding the drive cam inside the lock body with my other hand, I will thread the spindle into the cam 
and I'll thread it down until the top surface of the dial in this area is more or less flush with the top surface of the dial ring. As the dial gets close to the ring, I slow down and if I'm careful, those washers will position themselves correctly over the hub on the underside of the dial. If I move fast, I may trap one or more of those washers and I may distort them or I may damage something. So if I just move slowly and when I meet resistance, I simply back up and then move forward again. I exert almost no pressure if I meet resistance. And now I can tell that those washers have positioned themselves correctly and I can finish inserting the dial into the dial ring. And that's just about where I want it. We're almost flush with this surface of the dial to the top surface of the dial ring. Now that I have the dial in the ring just about where I want it, you notice I'm holding the cam so it doesn't move back out against this lever mechanism and everything stays in place in the lock case throughout this installation. Nothing comes out. You remove components at your own risk. Now I can mark the spindle where it first comes through the drive cam and that's the spot where I'm going to cut the spindle to length. When I'm finished and the dial is installed in the ring, the drive cam should not project beyond the back surface of the drive cam.